Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing measurement and we're going to start with the area of a polygon. Oh, first things first, I'm starting this video with the assumption that none of you guys are going to judge my drawing throughout the video. This is not about the drawing. <laughs> Let's please all look at the bigger picture, okay? Great, so now that that's out of the way, we know that the area of a square is side times side. So... That's the same as saying side squared. And then the area of a rectangle is the breadth times the height or the length times the breadth. And the area of a triangle is half of the base times height. Then we get a little bit of the more complicated um, polygons. So we get a trapezium. And the area is half A plus B times height. A parallelogram, the area is the breadth times the height. And the circle, the area is pi R squared. So let's take a few examples. Here, the area of this would be 4 times 8, which is breadth times height, which is 32 units squared. The area of a circle is pi r squared. r is 3, so it's pi 3 squared. That's 9 pi units squared. And the area of a triangle is half of the base times the height. So half of 8 times 6, which gives you 24 units. Now what happens when you have something like this? When you have a shape within a shape. And so in this, you tr you're only trying to find this area, the, the area of the shaded part, the shaded region. So you see that you have a bigger circle and a smaller circle. And you know you can find the area of the bigger circle because you have the radius. And you can find the area of the smaller circle because you also have the radius. And that's that. You just minus the area of the bigger circle from the smaller circle. Sorry, you minus the area of the smaller circle from the bigger circle. Then you get. So it's pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared. So our r1 is 8 in this case because we're taking the r1 as the radius of the big circle and the r2 as the radius of the smaller circle. So you just plug that in. And you put that in your calculator and you will get that the area of this shaded region is 48 pi units squared. Area and the volume of right prisms and cylinders. Here we have a rectangular prism. Surface area is 2 times area of base plus perimeter of base. So that gives you 2 times length times breadth plus 2 times length plus 2 times breadth. And then the volume is the area of base times the height, length times breadth times height. Then we have a cube. And the total surface area of a cube is 6 sides squared. And the volume of a cube is area of base times height, so side squared times height. And this is a triangular prism. The volume is equal to the area of the base times height, so half base times height times perpendicular height. This total surface area is the area of base plus half perimeter times height. And here we have a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared times height. And the total surface area is equal to pi r squared plus pi r times the height. Now let's do some examples. A popular potato chips container is cylindrical. The lid has a diameter of six centimeters and it, the whole container itself is 10 centimeters long. Calculate the total surface area of the container and its volume. So this is a cylinder. We said the total surface area of a cylinder is pi r squared plus pi r h. And then our R in this case is 3 because the diameter is 6. So this whole thing is 6. We only want half of it 
and that's 3. So we plug that into our, our formula. 3 squared pi 3 squared plus pi 3 times the height they said was 10 centimeters times 10. And you plug that all into your calculator and you get, and you will get 39 pi. The volume, the volume is pi r squared times height, and that's pi 3 squared times 10. Oopsie, I forgot my unit squared. Okay, so when you find the volume, it's that. You plug that into your calculator, and then you get 90 pi units cubed. Okay, now we move on to <laughs> square prisms. Now, this, the total surface area of a square prism is B times B plus 2 times H. This is the base times the base plus 2 times H. The volume is 1 third times the base squared times height. A triangular pyramid, the total surface area is half of the base times the height of the base plus 3 times the slant height. And the volume is one third times half of the base times height times the perpendicular height. The right cone, the total surface area is pi r radius times r plus h, which is the height. The volume is one third times pi r squared times height, perpendicular height. A sphere. The volume of a sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed and the total surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Now example 1. You go on an ice cream date with a friend. The ice cream that you get has a radius of 40 centimeters. The height of the cone is 57 millimeters. Calculate the area of a cone as well as its volume so we just plug it in we've been given all the information that we need pi r the radius is 40 times 40 plus 57 we plug that into our calculator and we get we get 3880 pi millimeters squared and then the volume would be 1 over 3 pi times 40 squared times 57 and then when we plug that in we get 30400 pi millimeters cubed moving on to multiplying by a dimension multiplying a dimension by a constant factor so if a dimension of a cube is doubled so okay firstly obviously you know that if you if you multiply the dimension with a constant factor the dimension of, of let's say you multiply the length of this by two it's going to change the surface area and it's going to change the volume right so if a dimension of a cube is doubled, then the volume of the cube is also doubled. If three sides are multiplied by five, then the volume is five cubed, and that gives you 125. So if you multiply three sides of a cube by five, then that cube is 125 times bigger than it was. And if the volume decreases by 0, 0,4, Find the new dimensions of the side. So the volume was side cubed, right? This is how you found the volume, and this was the volume first. Now the new volume is 0, 0,4 times that side cubed. So one side is the cubed root of 0, 
times S, and that is 0, 0,74. So now the sides are 0, 0,74 of the original length. Okay.